My Love of Life Energy is a podcast created by Anna Scott. Anna knows that every human being sees life uniquely. In this podcast, she will talk to people and learn from them. These conversations are to shine the brilliance of each human being she speaks to. Join her. After each exploration, you will expand on your insights and see truth and beauty. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to my podcast, My Love of Life Energy. And today, uh, (laughs) I'm just so grateful. I have one of my mentors and a man that I studied with um, for a year during COVID is with me today. And then Michael Neal, welcome to my podcast. I am just so honored to have you here. Nice to see you again. It's been a little while. (laughs) You can't see it, but he's in his office. I, I, I spent, well, I guess I spent a lot of time either on that co- sofa or a lot of time on this video. So welcome. And it's because of Michael, this podcast actually came out of work that I did with him at your Emerging Voices class, yeah. correct? I mean, right. I mean, not that that, but you had us create things and like you had us do the different projects. And this is one of the things you did. What else did you have us do at Emerging Voices? Because I know you have one coming up. Yeah. And I and swear to God. And, you know, they're, they're, every one I wind up getting groups to do different things. So I, 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 that's part of the fun of it is until I'm sitting with the group, I don't know what's going to occur to me as the kind of challenge for the group. But uh, we, you know, we do, we, you know, we've done everything from stand up comedy to writing songs to uh, slam poetry. <laughs> TED Talks to, I mean, you know, it, it, it to, to, to actually drawing and painting to, I, I mean, it really the point is people think either they aren't creative or they can only be creative in this area. And, and so they don't realize that the source of creativity is a constant presence in us and we can go to it for anything from growing our businesses to making good art, to speaking to the world, to changing a condition in the world. Mm. It's all the same source. And then each of those outlets is a craft in its own right. And that's sometimes what happens is people are kind of in touch with the source, but think that means they should automatically be great at everything. Well, no, most things are crafts that you get great at, you develop a mastery in through time and attention, through time and practice. And and so it it sort of, and I don't think we've we've run, gosh, six or seven of them. And we I've got a sold out one coming up in London and then I've got one coming up in LA in May. And I don't think I've ever had somebody go through the program who hasn't at some point gone, holy crap. I didn't realize what was possible. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the thing you get to take with you. And then if there is a craft like you, you take it on podcasting and you're developing your craft as a podcaster, you know, other people write and start developing their craft as writing. Other people talk and start developing their craft as teachers and speakers. It, 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 there's not a, a specific goal in we are trying to help you do this it's just when people realize how freaking fun it is to create, they do more of it. <laughs> the thing I, um, what you just said, because I, I, I do, I mean, this, that emerging voices for the people who are listening, I do want to give a big plug because it changed my life. It, I saw that you could go to the well and anything would come through. But I also saw what I loved, what I had a natural affinity to. Right. Yeah. Because there were so many different ways to play in it. And we were playing with it. So and, I highly- And I found it for me. I mean, even teaching it, I see more. Like that's part of the fun of teaching is you get to see more about whatever it is that you're teaching. And, you know, I've, I've started playing in mediums that I would never have touched. I mean, I did a freaking painting, Anna. Me. What? I know, right? You're yeah. kidding. No, I'm not. I'm not, you know, and it's, it's like, but, but that's kind of, you know, you know, in a microcosm is you just realize, oh God, yeah, it's not going to be hanging anywhere. I promise you that. But, but the fact that it was fun to create, it wasn't 
Oh God, I've got to do this. Oh God, I must, I should be able to do this. Oh, it was like, Ooh, I wonder what would happen if, and it, it just had such a different flavor. And then of course I realized, Oh yeah, same source, <laughs> right? Same uh, divine creative spark, but a completely different avenue of delivery, a completely different yeah, delivery mechanism. Mm. I, I was on a call with you recently for the super coach uh, monthly call. And one of the things that struck me, and I remember you saying this, and this is the thing that I love about you, you know, we're, we're both looking at the three principles and that understanding. And you said, you know, for a year after you learned it, that you could feel better, that you didn't need anything else. Hmm. But then when you saw what else you could, once this understanding could do with it, and I think it's this creativity. Is that, do you remember? Well, yeah, but like in a way, I felt bad for so much of my life that it, it, I just wanted to bask in the relief of feeling well. Mm. Like that was enough. That was more than enough. The idea, yeah, but what are you going to do with your well being? I'm like, I don't need to do any. I'm just so happy to not be unhappy. But then I, I, I realized, oh, it wasn't going anywhere. I didn't have to be careful with it. You know, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't fragile. But like, okay, I've got well-being as long as nobody breathes on me, right? Like, it's not like that. It's not like, it's not at risk. And, Say and more so, about that. That's so interesting. Well, our nature can't be damaged so it can't ever be at, uh, at risk our physical bodies can be right even our brains can be damaged but we can't the essence of who we are the the purity of who we are you, you know I, i'm i'm giving a talk in spanish on the principles tomorrow so I, I decided that it, my Creating the Impossible project, so every year we do a program called Creating the Impossible, and my Creating the Impossible project was going to, to be to teach a class in Spanish, not speaking a single word of Spanish other than, I guess, gracias. Um, uh, and and the, there's some old Steve Martin routine about uh, uh, donde esta, que pase de pepe, or something like that. Like like that was the extent of my Spanish. And tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be doing this yeah, <laughs> teaching this. But it's part of what allows for stuff like that is just saying, oh, it's the same well every time. Hmm. It, and, and, and so it, it, in response to your earlier question about why can't we be damaged? Like, why can't, what, what do I mean when I say there's nothing real at risk? Is that that essential self that space we are within which everything unfolds it is unaffected by anything that unfolds inside it in the same way as a mirror is unaffected by anything that it reflects. I've been using this analogy maybe too much lately, but if, if Hitler's mirror and Mother Teresa's mirror were both up for sale, you wouldn't know by looking at the mirror which one was which. Hmm. God. The, <clears throat> the purity of what you're seeing, like what you're saying, what I hear you saying is how pure that mirror is. Well, and, and it's the beauty of it. it. It's like, I sometimes think of it in terms of like a movie screen, right? The, you, you know, a movie screen that has been used to show a lot of horror movies is as unaffected by that as a movie screen that's only shown comedies and romances. And we are the screen, we are the mirror, we are that which life is reflected in and flows through, thought is reflected in and comes to life in. in. And therefore, we can't be affected by it. We are not at risk from life. 
or even from our own thinking. Now, it's not to say that we can't have a more pleasant experience of things if we use our gift of thought a little more wisely. But fundamentally, there's nothing real at stake, so there's no reason not to try stuff. Wow. And then how do you, I mean, I'm curious because of like the personality or the, the soul, Michael, because you have so much fun in what you create. Like you just have such a bigger willingness or a bandwidth to create. Mm -hmm. Like, do you just get ideas or do you think certain people are more that way than other people? Because you have such, you, you're not afraid of to create. You're not afraid of what the oh, outcome I is. I, I think it's what you just said, but backwards. It's once you're not afraid to create, you create because it's super cool. It's super fun. It's like, what else are you going to do with your time? Hmm. But if it's scary and dangerous and risky and takes a ton of energy and are you up for it? Well, gosh, it's amazing you create anything. <laughs> Cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I made coffee. Okay, good day. Right? No, but but it's true. Like, so it's not to my mind. Yes, some people, for whatever reason, have grown up in environments that encouraged that in themselves. And so they do it more. But usually it's localized. So mm -hmm. they might have grown up in a house, you, you know, like I think of um, Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas. You know, they just grew up in a house where they were kind of given instruments from the age of three and gone, have at it, you know, and if they were playing music at two in the morning, they weren't, their parents didn't come up and say, go to bed. They were like, that's good. Play that again. Right. So it was an environment that was conducive to that. But from, you know, the little I hear, I don't know that they, either of them, that that plays out everywhere in their life. I think it plays out in music for them. So sometimes that's what happens is we see it, but we think it's a localized phenomenon. Well, I was just, you know, born with the musical gene, or I was born with the painting gene, or I was born with the speaking gene, or I was born with the, th and it's like, no, you, you grew up in an environment that maybe encouraged that particular outlet for this, but this is in everyone. And this is available to you anywhere. And I've over the years, and you and I have talked about this, but you know, I've coached people who had this total ease and flow in business, but their personal lives were a mess. And other people who had this ease and flow in their personal lives, but they couldn't do business if their life depended on it. And it, they didn't see that it's the same thing. Hmm. I, I think that that's what like, to um, the emerging voices thing. I think that what I saw was that I began to see it's the same thing. Hmm. And then I just, Anna Scott had preferences. Right, and, and, and that's not even a problem. Like you can have preferences. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but like, you know, that, you, you, you know, um, uh, you, you know, Phineas and, uh, you know, Billie Eilish need to go out and, and start a clothing company. I, I mean, they could, <laughs> but, but it's like, I'm just, but, but, but it's, it's more just seeing, oh my goodness, this is available to me anywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. And so of course, you know, at times where there's a lot going on in your life, you might do less of it. But at times where you've got the space, like what a fun use of time and space. Mm. This is going to seem like a strange question because I know you love movies, but do you look at, because of this understanding and what you see, do you look at movies differently? And what you I see? I try not, <laughs> you know, because I want to enjoy the movie. You know, for me, it was more, you know, it, it, first a, as an actor and then, um, you know, as a, someone who coached screenwriters and directors and, and movie makers, I, I have gotten the chance to be on sets and see how the magic is made. And it's super cool. But I find that if it's done well, five minutes into the movie, I've forgotten all that. 
and just gotten caught up in the movie. And I'd rather be caught up. I don't want to go to the movies to stare at the projector. I want to go to the movies to get lost in the movie. And I don't want to be in life to tell myself that it's just a dream. It's a divine dream suspended between the boundaries of time, space, and matter. <laughs> Actually, what's really, it's like, no, I want to get caught up in life. But knowing that ultimately, no matter how caught up in the movie I am, I'm really in the balcony eating popcorn, enjoying the show, just means I, I feel less of a need to try to control everything. That what would you that's what you just said is so interesting is I want to get caught up in life. I mean, that is a great tagline. Like I, I can feel a song coming out of that one. <laughs> what what do you mean by that? Well, okay, this may be a, a, a you said it was going to be an odd question, and I'll give you an odd answer. Um, when I was younger and suffered a lot. Like I suffered depression, I suffered suicidal ideation. I, I, I did not have a pleasant experience of being alive. I wanted out and I, the whole suicide thing didn't work out for me, which I'm grateful for. But so my way out was gonna be spiritually, right? I was gonna get out by becoming enlightened. And then that seemed like the other way you could get out. And, mm. and, I, I, you know, I, I, I could have meditated for England. Like I was doing it every day. I was putting in the hours. I was <laughs> like, 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 you know, out, with, out last and out meditate. Like I was, you, you know, there, I'd read about this thing, you know, an unofficial club called the Midnight Club. And that the Midnight Club was, was for people who wanted to be enlightened in this lifetime, not eventually one day, maybe. Right. And so they were committed to, you know, before midnight, before, the, before to, to wake up to the reality, deeper spiritual reality. Of, and I was all in on this. And, and I remember one day in a meditation, and it's one of only two times in my life I've heard voices, but I was meditating and I could feel the boundaries dissolving. Like everything I had read that happens, the, I could feel the physical uh, boundaries of uh, at dissolving and becoming one. And, and, and part of me was like, Oh my God, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And, and then I heard a voice so clearly that said, you did not come here to leave. Oh, wow. And it, it I, I don't even know what I thought, but it changed everything. Because I just knew it was true. I didn't come to see how quickly I could get out. Hmm. And so I started getting interested in life instead of trying to fix it. Mm. God, I, I um, one of the things that I, because when I think of you, Michael, my experience of you is you're one of the people who enjoys life. Like you relish it. Like you drink it in and gobble it all up. And that's when you said, you know, I want to get caught up in life. It's to me, what I'm hearing is that you want to just enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah. And, 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 and more and more, like I, it, it's, I didn't realize you were allowed to enjoy everything. Like I thought you could only enjoy the good stuff. You could only enjoy the time off. You could only enjoy it when it was working the way you wanted it to, which meant that you could only enjoy it some of the time. Right now, some was better than none. Right. I know people who don't enjoy any of it. So, you know, I'll take some fun over no fun but I didn't realize that it can be all fun. Mm. Not that like, there's a, there's a beautiful George Bernard Shaw line where he said, life does not become less funny when people die any more than it becomes less serious when people laugh. Mm. Right. Life, life's got it all. God, you know, I, I just, it, it strikes me because um, recently, you know, I've been working with clients and one of the things that we end up coming to is people don't enjoy their life. Like that's what they really want. That's what secretly they're looking for. Right. And, and, and it sounds too trivial. 
So I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I'd love to enjoy it, but what I really need is money. Well, I'd love to enjoy it, but I, what I really need is this marriage to work. Well, I'd love to enjoy it, but I, what I really need is for my kid to change. Well, I'd love to enjoy it, but what I really need is for my body to heal. And it's, it's missing the point to me. Like, if you are enjoying it, of course you still want your body to heal and your kid to behave and your marriage to work and your bank balance to have a plentifulness in it. But it, it doesn't have that same energy of heaviness about it. One of my favorite lines from Sid Banks, you know, who I assume you talk about in these podcasts, but maybe yeah. you don't. But one, one, one of the, the, the just my absolute favorite lines is, you know, he's talking about the fact that when he was teaching, people would complain, well, you can't be that spiritual. You guys are laughing all the time. <laughs> and they were like, you know, this is serious. And, and, and he said, what they don't understand is, I'm serious too, just without the feeling. Mm. Like being lighthearted doesn't mean you don't take things to heart. It just means you don't carry them as a burden. Mm. The, the image I have of you is like a little, a little kid, you know, when they're learning about things and the glee, the excitement running from one exhibit to the next and what they can see and what they can play with. Like there's this glee in life that's inherent in us. And you seem to have. Anyway, I was just saying your glee. Like, and I think that that's what's available, what you're talking about, that this behind us, when we let all of our thinking go, there's this inherent glee to life. Yeah, and, and it's not like I'm obligated to be in it 24-7, because that wouldn't be fun. That was like to have to. You know, where's the glee? <laughs> but, but, like, are we having fun yet? Like, like it's, it's not a job description. It's not like, oh, God, now I not only have to be successful, but I've got to enjoy it. it it's not a punishment. It's a possibility. Like, I genuinely did not know that enjoying somebody's company was a legitimate basis for a relationship. I thought it had to be for something and growth and learning and, you know, development and and it's like, and I remember when I, when I read that in, in um, George Pransky's book, The Relationship Handbook, I remember thinking, holy crap, that's, we're, we're allowed to just be with somebody because we enjoy being with them. <laughs> so simple. And by the way, I'd already been happily married for 18 years at that point. It wasn't like I, I didn't like my partner, but I didn't know it could be that simple. I thought I needed more justification for things or I needed to maybe earn the right to enjoy it. Whereas actually I have found the exact opposite is true. The more I enjoy things, the, the better at them I tend to get. And when I don't, it's okay. I mean, you've seen me play golf. I don't know if I've ever gotten better at it, but I still <laughs> love it. I still remember the drive. <laughs> you hit the <laughs> best drive ever. Oh, yeah, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that but that's it. Well, we're, we I can't. I don't know how this happened, but we're at the end of our time, which is crazy talk to me. And um, I I can't thank you enough. It's it's an honor to be with you. It always has been. Mm -hmm. And I really, if you for people. Um, where can they find out about the next upcoming um, Emerging Voices? Class? Oh, it's all, uh, michaelneal.org is, um, I don't know if you've seen it since we redid it, but we, we redid mm -hmm. it last month. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's home for everything. So if, you, if mm -hmm. you're interested, check it out. And there's, you know, tons of free stuff. And we, we've got a new basic course that is free for anyone where they can kind of mm -hmm. learn the basics of this in a couple of hours. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we just, I just keep trying to find more ways to share because it's such an extraordinary thing to know and such a bummer to not know, given that it's there. Oh, my God. And you do it so beautifully. Thank you. I know you impacted my life. Thus, this podcast, without you, I probably wouldn't have done it.
So thank you. Thank you.